Welcome to Bad Gear, the show about the world's most hated audio tools. There are quite a few special days for synth lovers all around the globe. The 8th of August, Nick Bat's birthday and the day Uli Beringer found the secret ingredient to his business success. However, there is a day that was much anticipated as one of these magical events. The release date of the DSi Tempest. This 2011 hybrid drum machine was created by two of the most influential figures in synth and drum machine design. Roger Lynn, legendary father of the MPC and the late Dave Smith, undisputed synth god and important contributor to the MIDI standard that allows even musical lightweights like me to bang out acceptable tracks and jams. So far so good, but how did a religious artifact like this end up on this show and what happened to Tempest Day? At the first glance, this episode is a severe case of six gorgeous voices of Dave Smith analog. And a tasteful collection of samples. Share a luxury condo with plenty of knobs, the second best drum pads I've ever played. And real simulated wood grain sides. The genesis of the Tempest workflow is a sound, which consists of two analog. <laughs> and two sample-based oscillators, including waves of the Prophet VS. This evolver-like cocktail is put through analog filters. High pass and feedbacked mini Moog headphone out to audio in style. Delay is not a real audio effect, but creates additional notes for echo-like tones. There are five full-fledged envelopes and the two LFOs range from eternity to audio rate fast. Some modulations can be set up using dedicated controls, but there's a modulation matrix too. MPC-like pad modes and roll and arpeggiator can be modulated with aftertouch. Reverse can be used on analog sounds too. 96 ppqn and a maximum pattern length of 8 bars are ok and up to 16 beats including all sound settings can be triggered and processed in their entirety in, well, 16 beats mode. The touch sensitive real time FX strips offer notes and beat FX which are freely assignable for the most part. Distortion and a fully adjustable compressor Nice! All this sounds like a dream come true, so before the disciples of the Tempest show up at my place with torches and pitchforks, we should take a look at the controversy surrounding the instrument. First of all, it was far from being finished on release, and we are talking early access on Steam not finished. Bugs, crashes and essential features were not implemented yet. Updates gradually turned it into a more reliable and complete instrument, but even in 2016 a change org petition tried to make DSi aware of a plethora of issues. Secondly, the amount of menu diving necessary to use the Tempest to its full potential would make an 80s Roland UI designer blush. You will be staring at the crisp display a lot and the combination of global screen modes, cursor navigation, soft keys, second layer shift functionality and the screen following your tweaks takes some time to get used to. What is more, the 
the analog engines are not tailored to drum sound. They're complete DSi voices. Great for sound design, not so great if you want that fully analog classic TR bass drum now. Keep in mind that the 32 sounds of a beat share 6 analog voices, which can lead to note stealing. You can, however, dedicate an analog voice to a sound, which automatically assigns it to one of the six voice outputs. In all other cases, voice allocation is dynamic. Finally, I haven't found a way to import my own samples, but one of the most recent firmwares comes with a new set of sounds. Patch memory is a little limited for a music production centerpiece, and Tempest prices haven't changed much since its introduction. Thanks to my neighbor Paul for lending me his Tempest. The DSi Tempest combines high-end analog synthesis and classic samples with a powerful sequencer. Did the two elder statesmen of the music tech industry aim too high? You have already heard the Tempest in today's intro tune. That's very tight and a tiny bit too well behaved. Let's have a listen to my very first I have no idea what I'm doing Tempest jam. That's a fine sounding groove box. The sequencer has a nice feel to it and it's great to have complete synth voices in a drum machine environment. However, it took me a few hours to get used to the workflow with handling of polyphony and note stealing as one of the main challenges. I wanna know if we can find a solution for that. Meticulous planning of voice allocation definitely helps to keep beats consistent and external FX allow for complete mixes in real time. Beat management is convenient and the touch strips are great performance tools. The synth and sample player engine is extremely versatile. Let's use the Tempest as a sound module hooked up to the DAW in this IDM infused slightly over complex jump up drum and bass clown step for false profit. Tempest reminds me of a gorgeous old sports car. It oozes raw power and elegance, it comes with the reputation of its creators, but it's also quirky, eccentric, often inconsistent and you will have to put in quite some time and dedication to get the most out of it in everyday use. The latest firmware, while not flawless, is perfectly usable and leaves us with an instrument that seems like a tribute to the glory of 20th century music technology, created by two of its greatest heroes. What would be a modern day equivalent to The Tempest? Maybe Uli Beringer and Nico Kotulas releasing an easy to use hybrid groove box which, and you will hate me for saying this, will most probably work perfectly from day one. Thanks for watching and see you next time. Hey guys, I hope you enjoyed the episode, feel free to like, subscribe, become a patron and leave a comment what other kind of gear you would like to see and hear on the show. 